so I don't sound a little quiet while I read this. I'm not. I'm just gonna read this. Uh, my head hurts. I mean, I'm just kind of sitting here because it was snowing outside. There's like six inches of snow, and my head hurts. So let's read this. I'm just. I might read a little bit uh, earlier than when I stopped last time, but uh, I'm just gonna read the entire chapter, and then I don't know what happened from there. <coughs> After a few more awkward minutes, he reached the bottom of his list. All right, that concludes the news. The uniform said quietly, are there any issues you all would like to discuss before we conclude the meeting? No one looked directly at Candy Floss. Breeze coughed quietly. Very well, said Candy Floss, smiling, smiling his usual mysterious smile. The work day is over. I see you all tomorrow. Gratefully, the five ponies rose from the table to leave for the day. Glow was the first to exit, with Watt following behind and attempting to start another pointless conversation with the unicorn. Ditsy was at the back of the line. Oh, Ditsy, said Candy Floss suddenly, just before the mare passed through the doorway. Yes, sir? The Grey Pegasus asked hesitantly. Did you come to my office for just a moment before you leave? The unicorn asked calmly. Ditsy go. Yes, sir. Candy Floss nodded and proceeded down the stairs. Ditsy followed him into the office and sat down. Candy Floss didn't look angry, but then again, the unicorn's expression was never very indicative of what he was thinking. Ditsy waited to come uncomfortable, uncomfortably as he stared at her for a few moments. I just wanted to ask you, he said slowly, if you have any specific concerns about your job, now that you have a chance to experience a variety of situations. Ditsy suspected Candy Floss had overheard everything that happened prior to the staff meeting. He was now prompting her to ask the same question she had tried to ask Breeze. Well, Ditsy started shifting uncomfortably under the boss's gaze. I failed the mission for the first time today. No, the pony I was trying to help won't be able to date the mare of his dreams. How how can I continue how can I continue while knowing I wasn't able to help? Candy Floss took a deep breath. Ditsy I'd like to tell you a little story, if you can spare the time to listen. I have a few minutes, Ditsy replied. Candy Floss leaned forward again. Good. I, have, I haven't had a chance to tell anyone this in ages. You see, Ditsy, when I started this company a few years ago, it almost collapsed shortly after opening. Do you know why? Um, for advertising? Ditsy guessed. Candy Floss chuckled. No, it was because as soon as I hired my first employees, I witnessed something I had never seen, ex I had never been exposed to before. I saw potential couples fail, and despite the work of my shippers, and it didn't take long for me to wind up feeling a bit how you are right now. Then why didn't you close the company? Ditsy asked. Because just as I was about to do so, I received a letter from a client, a client whose request our shippers were unable to grant. In this letter. She expressed her happiness that our employee failed, as she had learned a terrible truth about the stallion she was infatuated with. Her life would, in fact, have gotten indefinitely worse in a big hurry had we succeeded her ship, her shipping with her, him. So you got lucky once, said Ditsy, but that doesn't mean all failed jobs are a good thing. At first, you would think so, continued Candy Floss, but you see... There is a, that this little incident allowed me to compare myself to the rest of my employees. I am the only pony among us whose special talent is matchmaking. Ponies like you, while quite capable of working in this job, would like would be at a disadvantage when compared to me, right? Right. Did he right? Right. Ugh. Compared to me, right? Right. Did he read wrong? Candy Floss cried. In the loudest voice Ditsy had ever heard in a normally soft-spoken unicorn use. Being born to be a matchmaker is both a blessing and a curse. You see, I have an innate magical sense that tells me when two ponies are meant to be together. The problem is, I cannot control when it arrives or who it points to. Sometimes ponies I don't even know are involved. But there are many so there are so many ponies out there who are meant to be together who are living so very different lives that my powers cannot detect them. So, while I have matched many ponies myself, so very many more have developed a love for another pony that I cannot detect. This is natural, 
Love is an ancient and powerful force that far exceeds the talents of any one poet. So you hire shippers to help with the rest? Did you respond? Yes, I hire shippers who act only upon rep request of a love shop pony as opposed to the unsolicited help that I provide, Candy Floss answered. But that still doesn't solve the problem, Ditsy yelled in exasperation. The shippers, the ponies whose special talent is not matchmaking, can't decide for certain if a couple is meant to be like you can. So, how can we know if a failure or even a success is a good thing or a bad thing? That, said Candy Floss, is what I aim to discover, and I believe I have found the answer. He leaned still closer to Pegasus' employee. I believe that magic that I possess, and that other ponies will this talent. Ooh, and other ponies will this talent also control. I am not confined to a select few. I believe that Equestria itself is imbued with the same magic, and it channels itself through the through those it finds fit to wield its power. Huh? Did he ask? Sorry, but I have no idea what you mean. Let me rephrase. Candy Floss said. This magic that allows for good matches to be made, the bad ones to be rejected, can, and often is, wielded by ponies who do not possess a matchmaking cutie mark. But this only works if a pony is seriously, sincerely trying to create a bond between two others. If it is meant to be, it will be, and if not, then it will not. Either outcome is e ultimately will ultimately be best for the ponies involved in the matchup. So you're saying that it is impossible for us to create a bad match? Did he ask? Almost, said Candy Floss. But it is possible for other ponies to choose the wrong partner. So herein lies the value of shipping serves. Assuming the job is done right, you effectively test the other pony's choice for them. If you fail, it means that pony chose a partner poorly, and now they are prevented from the acting upon that poor choice. So in the grand scheme of things, you've helped them just as much as if you had matched them with a pony that they were meant to be with. Ditty was stunned. Is this really true? Well, it is my personal theory, Candy Floss said, but it is not yet proven wrong. Awesome, the Pegasus replied, leaping into the air. So what happened today was meant to happen anyway? Probably, said Candy Floss, but remember, Ditsy, you are not infallible. It's still possible to perform an assignment so poorly that even the innate magic cannot help you. But I believe you think your assignments do well enough to avoid that. More importantly, you cannot be certain that the magic has worked for you with withhold any effort or lack of sincerity about the work you do. If you stick to these principles, then it is far more likely that failure to create a couple can be blamed on the fact that they were not meant to be together, rather than on your own imp in him I can't read that. In ineptitude, okay. <clears throat> Candy Floss glanced at his clock. Goodness, it's getting late. Run on home now, Miss Ditsy. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Ditsy called gratefully as she flew down this hallway and out of the building. Candy Floss gathered his things and left for the day as well. There was a silence in the halls of Equestria's speedy shipping services for a few more minutes, then the silence was broken by the faint hum of an inv invisibility spell wearing off, revealing a certain blue uniform. What a load of horse apples, Glow said when, to, to no one in particular. I bet Ditsy totally buys that little story of candy flosses, too, she smiled deviously to herself. I bet if I wait till the time is right, I can make good use of that little fable. It's just another weapon for me to use against her later. I'm going to make that dopey Pegasus regret joining this company, one way or another. The next morning, Ditsy Doo found herself on another on another early morning assignment. The Pegasus flew contently along, feeling renewed in her devotion to her job after her talk with Candy Floss the day before. Today, the main thought occupying Ditsy's mind was the address to which she had been she had been sent. It was an easy address to remember. It was located on the Everfree Lane, the street in Ponyville that passed closest to the Everfree Forest. There was only one home on that street, and belonged to a pony now that to a pony that now that Ditsy thought about it, seemed a likely candidate to need the shipping services to help her in a relationship. 
The house soon came into view, a quaint cottage next to a bubbling stream surrounded by a plethora of underground dens, birds' nests, feeders, animal pens, and a dozen of other signs that indicated the presence of Ponyville's resident animal expert. After she landed in the stream, unfortunately, Ditsy shook herself off and trotted up to the door, rapping on it a few times with her hook. There was a silence for a few moments, and then the door creaked open. A crack. A bright pair of... A pair of bright teal eyes stared out for a second. Fluttershy? asked Ditsy hesitantly. That you? The door opened and the rest of the way, revealing the aforementioned yellow pegasus. Yes, um... Good morning, said Fluttershy. Are you here to deliver the mail already? No, Ditsy said. I'm here for... Um, um, I'm here from Equestria Speedy Shipping Services. Oh, Fluttershy squeaked. Goodness, that was fast. I hope I didn't call too early. I thought they would wait until later. I'm so sorry for bothering you at such an early hour. Shush, said Ditsy. I was already at work anyway. I needed something to do. Oh, well, okay, Fluttershy mumbled. Um, won't you come in? Can I offer you some breakfast? In truth, Ditsy hadn't had time to eat that morning. She accepted Fluttershy, Fluttershy's offer, and soon found herself seated at the table, watching Fluttershy whip up a large batch of oatmeal. So, Fluttershy, Ditsy asked, what kind of job did you have in mind when you called this morning? Oh, um, um, Fluttershy stuttered. Well, I, um, I'm not sure if I should actually, um, go through with it until I've given it a little bit more thought and, uh, time and... <laughs> Typical Fluttershy, hesitant and wishy-washy as always. No, Fluttershy, Ditsy said firmly as Fluttershy paced placed a steaming bowl of oatmeal in front of her. You can't back down now. I know you called us for a reason. I understand you're worried about making a move, but I can help you. You just need to tell me who it is and who you're interested in. Fluttershy hid the majority of her face behind her mane and thought about what to do. Ditsy waited patiently for the shy mare to work up the courage to speak. In the meantime, she helped herself to some oatmeal, which was exquisite. At least as far as oatmeal goes. <laughs> it's, um, I, um, Fluttershy mumbled something. I uh, beg your pardon? Ditsy asked, putting a hoof to her ear expectantly. I said it's... it's... Who? Rainbow Dash! Rainbow Dash! Fluttershy screamed, practically knocking Ditsy out of her chair with a yell. The timid Pegasus immediately covered her mouth with both who blushing happily. Sorry, I'm just really nervous. I can tell, Ditsy replied, patting down her mane to the style it was before Fluttershy had blown it back. But at least I know who we're dealing with now. Fluttershy sighed. Rainbow Dash and I have been friends for years. I've known her longer than any of my other friends, and lately I've started to have some feelings for her. But we're just so different. Ditsy just nodded since her mouth was again full of oatmeal. Rainbow, Rainbow Dash treats me like a friend. Fluttershy continued. But it seems like she's only really interested in her stunts and training. She'll probably fall in love with another amazingly talented, talented Pegasus like her. But a quiet, timid pony like me. You never know, though, said Ditsy. I think we should go find Rainbow Dash right now. I'll talk to her a little bit and see if you, I can find a way for her to... I can find a way to make her like you. But won't she wonder what we're up to if I just start interrogating her? Fluttershy asked. We'll just pretend the two of us are going shopping, Ditsy said, and start a casual conversation on the way. Bye. Ditsy has used the going shopping excuse for a number of assignments now. It was a good way to prevent the target pony from realizing that she and her client were in cahoots. Oh, that word. Cahoots. <laughs> cahoots! Uh <coughs> Sorry. I get a little distracted. Who says that? I think it's the butterscotch meets Fluttershy thing and the... I was distracted. I love that band. Whoever did that was genius. Whoever like had that rounded up it was a genius. I gotta stop getting off track. Well, we have to start somewhere, Dizzy said, finishing off the bowl of oatmeal. Let's go. 
Fluttershy and Dizzy flew into Cloudsdale where Rainbow Dash was likely to be at this time of day. It didn't take long to find the multi-tooled multi, multi -tooled Pegasus. Multicolored Pegasus, pushing together a group of rain clouds for a scheduled downpour in a nearby town. Rainbow noticed as the two other Pegasi approached. Hi Fluttershy, hey, hi Dizzy, how are you? We're going shopping, why do you ask? Okay. <laughs> hi Fluttershy, hi Dizzy, how are you? Uh, we're going shopping. Why do you ask? <laughs> oh, oh, she was supposed to say it loudly. We're going shopping. Why do you ask? <laughs> Said Fluttershy way too loudly. Rainbow raised an eye. Did she just face it? <laughs> I mean, said Fluttershy, finally re realizing she had answered the re uh, the wrong question. <laughs> How are you? We're going shopping. Why do you ask? <laughs> Wait, hold on. What? <laughs> Uh, I'm fine, Rainbow. How are you, Rainbow Dash? Can't complain, Rainbow Dash replied, chalking up Fluttershy's unusual behavior to another result of the yellow Pegasus's frayed nerves. But I'm really excited for later today. Do you know why? Um, no, Fluttershy squeaked. The one. <laughs> Forget I said that. <laughs> the Wonderbolts are coming, Rainbow Dash cried. This afternoon, they'll be signing autographs in front of Cloudsdale Stadium. I hope they'll remember me. Oh, said Fluttershy. That's, um, nice. Heck yeah, it is. <laughs> Heck yeah, it is. I don't know who says that, but, uh, she responded. Listen, ladies, I'd love to stay in chat, but I have to get the weather done in time for this afternoon. See ya. Rainbow turned and hauled the... Amal Gam amalgamation of storm clouds off into the distance. Well, that didn't take that didn't last long, Fluttershy said sadly. But you can see what I mean, right? Rainbow Dash would rather be with the Wonderbolts than me. Dizzy didn't respond. <laughs> Messed up. Um hello? Fluttershy asked nervously, waving her hoof in front of Dizzy's face. But the gray man didn't the gray man the gray mare didn't respond. Somewhere in the depths of her brain, another crazy plan was suddenly piecing itself together. Fluttershy was just about to give up and go look for a pony with medical expertise when Dizzy snapped out of her trance and grinned at Fluttershy. I think I know just how we can get Flutter Rainbow Dash to like you, Fluttershy. Fluttershy was unnerved by the sly look on Dizzy's face. Is that a good thing? Go back to your cottage for now, said Dizzy, ignoring the question. Excuse me. <sighs> a little. I'm a little sick. Um, I have to cough out of the, uh, away from this laptop. <coughs> and it doesn't really work too well. I'll meet you there a little later, and we'll continue. Continue. I've got something to ca take care of first. Fluttershy whis whis whimpered. Unsure of precisely what she was getting herself into, but she turned and flew away, leaving Ditty to begin her new plan. Phillies and gentle coats, the ponies of all ages, may I present to you the Wonderbolts! The huge crowd of Pegasides cheered wildly as the famous flying team appeared, creating a complex pattern in midair with their smoke trails before finally coming to the stand by the long table set up in front of the stadium. Rainbow Dash was one of the first, very first ponies in line, eager to talk to her heroes again and get a few signed photographs. A certain gray Pegasus was also there too, a few ponies behind. Well, if it isn't our, oh god, I don't know a Spitfire voice. Well, if it isn't our biggest fan, oh god, uh, I choose that voice. Well, if it isn't our biggest fan, Spitfire, the Winterbolt's leader, commented as Rainbow Dash approached. Have you been, Rainbow Dash? Uh, I've been great, Rainbow announced. I've been training hard, just like always. Good to hear, the Wonderbow replied. Don't forget, Ponyville's round of new recruit tryouts are just in a few months. Wouldn't miss them for the world, Rainbow replied. Spitfire smiled. I really, I really do like your spirit, right, Dash. I hope to ma I hope you manage to make the team one day. Dash giggled giddily as the Spitfire signed a photograph and passed it to her. Thanks, Spitfire. See you around. 
Spitfire waved as Dash clutched the photo tightly and darted off to meet the other Wonder Boys. Spitfire watched her for a few moments and turned to greet the next pony in line. Well, would you look at this? It's Ditsy Doom. How's my old roommate from flight school doing today? Ditsy grinned. Not bad, not bad, Spitfire. Are you? Uh, same old, same old, Spitfire lad. The life of a celebrity. Fun, but predictable. The two long-time friends laughed, but then Ditsy's expression became more serious. Listen, Spitfire, remember that favor you owe me? I've come to collect it. I need you to lend me something. Is it my soul? Spitfire grinned. <laughs> That's it. Spitfire's grim diminished. Uh, sure. What do you need? Two Wonderbolt costumes, both for mares. I think this is getting a little kinky. We're going to what? Fluttershy stood quaking and staring down apprehensively at the bright blue garment, like it was a venomous snake. You heard me, Ditsy said. You and I are going to pretend to be new Wonderbolts. Get Dash to totally adore you and then reveal who you really are. That will make her see how cool you can really be. But I can't be cool, Fluttershy deadpan. I mean, I'm not good at doing aero aerial stunts or anything. It doesn't really matter, said Ditsy. I'm pretty sure Dash will be excited about hanging out with a Wonderbolt to even notice that you're not even up to standard with the rest of them. <laughs> but, but, Fluttershy stammered, fumbling for another excuse. But my mane, she'll recognize that even if I'm wearing the disguise. Fluttershy hurled a bottle of temporary mane dye in Flutter Fluttershy's direction. The timid pony groaned, but gave in and went to the bathroom to apply it. Now I look like the great and powerful Trixie, the yellow pegasus grumbled when she emerged, toying disapprovingly with her now blue-white mane and tail. Ditsy just laughed as she trotted in and applied the bright green dye it that she had purchased for herself. Ditsy exited the bathroom to find. Ditsy exited the bathroom to find Fluttershy finally decked out in the borrowed uniform. It was very convincing. Ditsy wouldn't have recognized Fluttershy at all if she wasn't, if she hadn't been aware of her identity ahead of time. That just leaves me with one more thing to address. Ditsy continued as she donned the other Wonderbolts uniform. Your voice. We're going to need to disguise it. Oh, that's easy said Fluttershy. I, um, took voice lessons. I seem to have a natural talent for impressions. Really? Did he ask? You, that little voice of yours, show me. <laughs> so blue leg. Hi, I'm Ditsy Doo and I like muffins. Fluttershy announced, perfectly mirroring Ditsy's voice <laughs> Hearing another pony speak in her own voice caused Ditsy to collapse with laughter. Fluttershy giggled as well. Great, great, it, great, great, Ditsy said as she hicked up, hiccuped away a last of her chuckles. Now see if you can fabricate a good wonderful voice, maybe like Spitfire, but a little higher. Like this? Oh god. I can't. I can't do it. I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna try to find a voice that I can keep going on. I've come back with unfortunately nothing to really show for it. Mm. So I'm just gonna do like a Fluttershy, not, not like, a, like Fluttershy Rainbow Dash mix, I think. Like this? Like I can't, it's like, like this? Like, it's hard. Just, just bear with me. I think I might just do a Fluttershy voice the whole time. It's just that I can't, can't seem to get a voice for her. Okay. Perfect, Ditsy remarked. Your identity is completely concealed. Let's go. But I'm not sure if I, um, um, oh, just come on, Ditsy grumbled, yanking the cautious pony out of the door. Two new Wonderbolts, quote unquote, <laughs> crouched in the uppermost branches of the oak tree, their eyes trained on the prismatic pegasus napping on a few, on a cloud a few meters above. What do I do? Oh, God. What do I do? No. Mm. Whatever. I'm just gonna do a regular Fluttershy voice. What do I do? Whispered Fluttershy. Oh, oh god. Whispered Fluttershy anxiously. You just need to act like a Wonderbolt. Hit Ditsy his back. Be confident. 
a little arrogant if you have to. Make up some stories about aerial feats that you've done that will impress even Rainbow Dash. And I'll be back beside you to back you up. Just remember, keep your voice disguised and whatever you do, don't break character or it's game over. What is that from Brawl? I don't know. Fluttershy gulped. I don't know why I, tell you, I let you talk me into this. Too late for second thoughts, here we go! <laughs> Ditsy jumped up from the tree and floated into the air. With Fluttershy following behind, soon they were within a few meters of Rainbow Dash, who had not yet stirred from her sleep. Rainbow took a slow, deep a breath, cleared her throat, and began to speak in her shincha shashed wonderful voice. Hey, that must be Rainbow Dash. Spitfire mentioned something about her. Rainbow awoke to the mention of her name. She blinked a few times and her eyes went wide as she realized two Wonderbolts were hovering about uh over her. Oh my gosh, it's the Wonderbolts! Dash got up. <laughs> I want to do the, the Rainbow Factory dash, but I don't think I can do it. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, guys! <laughs> I just can't. That'd be pretty cool if I could, though. What are you doing here? Are you looking for me? Damn, I'm wasting so much time. I was going so good in the more in the beginning too. We were, we were," said Fluttershy. "You two new recruits that passed the trials last time were in Huffington. Spitfire told us about you, so we figured we'd meet you while you were in Cloud Cloudsdale. Cloudsdale. Awesome, Rainbow Dash squealed. What are your names? Fluttershy froze. She and Ditsy had forgot to." come up with co-names before they began. Cyclone. Uh, hi, um, I'm Storm Chaser, Fluttershy answered, hoping that she would be quick, she had been quick enough, and this is my partner, uh, Skyclone. <laughs> I said Skyclone. Sky, Sky Cyclone. Dizzy, who was not good at disguising her voice, just nodded. She wanted to avoid speaking when possible. Nice to meet you, Rainbow said enthusiastically. Spitfire probably told you this, but I'm Rainbow Dash. I'm one of the fastest flyer in Equestria, and I'll be joining the Wonderbolts myself just as soon as the trials arrive here again. Really? Really? Asked Fluttershy, managed to add a hint of curious skepticism to her voice. Let's see some of your moves then, Hotshot. Ditsy had to turn around to hide her grin. Fluttershy couldn't be assertive, sarcastic, or challenging, or anything else harsh in reality to save her life. But wow, could she act. Sure, check this out, Rainbow said, speeding off to do some tricks in the sky. Ditsy floated next to Fluttershy. You're amazing, she whispered in her to the usually shy Pegasus. How are you doing that? I, I learned it in a school play, Fluttershy mumbled back. I discovered that if I pretend I am really the pony I'm playing the part of, I can manage to act like that pony would instead of myself. It's all about the mindset, I guess. I think I need to do that. <laughs> Fluttershy was stunned. Fluttershy, you're a pony of many talents, you know that? Who's Fluttershy? She Fluttershy asked, disguising her voice again. I'm Storm Chaser. That's the spirit, I whispered as a dash came soaring back over the pair. So, how was that? Rainbow asked smugly. Pretty smooth moves, huh? Yeah, not bad, said Fluttershy, trying to sound only immoderately impressed. What about you, Sky Cyclone? Ditsy grinned and nodded fiercely to indicate her feelings. She raised her eyebrow. You don't talk much, do you? No, she doesn't, Fluttershy said. So, those were decent moves in our rainbow, but what about- Oh, I just had an idea. Since you guys are a recent addition to the rainbow team, how about we have a race? If I can keep up with you, I know I'm ready to ace the triangles. Uh, uh, Fluttershy thought quickly, searching for a way out. Alright then, excuse us for a second while we discuss why- which of us will race you. Fluttershy grabbed Ditsy and pulled her over to the nearby cloud, where the two Pegasi turned their backs to rainbow. Yes? Can I help you? Okay. Okay, I got you. Okay. Okay, let me get, let me just finish this reading and then I'll go do whatever you want. Yes, I, I need to finish the reading. Because I haven't read in like four months. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Close the door. Slowly. 
Thank you. Now what, Fluttershy squeaked. Remember that she'll actually be paying attention to our performance now. She'll, she'll know we're not really wonder, wonder bolts if we can't at least keep up with her. Don't look at me. It's, it's, my flying is terrible. It's hard to move forward with lots of speed when you're looking in two directions at once. Fluttershy groaned. I can fly decently, but there's simply no way I can keep up with Rainbow Dash. Unless, said Ditsy suddenly, you can use strategy instead of speed. We need to set a race course that you can somehow use for your advantage, to make it seem like you're going faster than you really are. Fluttershy ga gasped. Like during the running of the leaves last year, Applejack used a flexible tree branch to launch yourself forward. Right. We just need to use stuff like that, it'll help you. We'll set a course through the woods, and we'll find a bunch of shortcuts and other surprises you can use in to stay ahead of Rainbow. You'll never know what hit her. Do you really think that can work? <clears throat> I hope so. Uh, it, it's the only way I think we can win. The two ponies ceased their huddle and flew back to Rainbow Dash. All right, Rainbow Fluttershy said. Here's the scoop. Sky Cyclone here is going to mark the course of the woods, so neither of us are going to know the route by heart. Then you and I will race through there when she's done. A test of speed and agility? Rainbow observed. You know Wonderbolts know how to do it right. Meet us at the woods in about an hour, Fluttershy said. Rainbow saluted and took off, probably to go practice. Per uh, <laughs> I was going to say, saluted and took off probably to go practice. Practice. Fluttershy turned to her companion. The next part's up to you, Ditsy, so um, good luck. There you are. Fluttershy panted in relief when Ditsy came into view. Are you finished? Rainbow will be here any minute. I'm done, Ditsy said. I've lined up a trail of red mushrooms along the path you're supposed to follow. Every now and then I've lit a blue mushroom on a patch of moss. When you see a blue mushroom on moss, it means there's a shortcut there. If you follow it, it will lead you to a later part of the red trail. If you use the shortcuts, you will be able to keep up with Rainbow, since she won't know that they're there. Just don't let her see you take these routes, or she'll know you're cheating. Okay, Fluttershy said. Anything else? Yeah, said Ditsy. At the end of the course, is a long straightaway leading out of the woods. If Rainbow still manages to get ahead of you, you can use this one big tree branch just like Applejack did to throw herself forward. Just flap your wings while you do so, so it still looks like you're flying. If you can pull that off, you'll win for sure. Good, Fluttershy said, because here she comes. The two Pegasi looked up at Rainbow Dash as she descended from the sky. The colorful pony's mane was very windblown. She'd probably been giving herself a serious workout to warm up. You ready? Rainbow challenged. Of course, said Fluttershy coolly, again doing a fabulous job of hiding her nervousness. Nervousness. <laughs> Fluttershy Cyclone set up a trail of red mushrooms for us to follow. First one to reach the outer edge of the woods wins. Both ponies crouched down, winds spread, ready to take off. Fluttershy glanced to, at this Ditsy, signaling, signaling her to start the race. On your mark, Ditsy said, trying to sound as hard as possible to change your voice to literally anything than its normal sound. Get set, Rainbow tensed, flapping her wings in and once again in anticipation. Fluttershy did the same. Go! Both ponies rocketed forward into the woods. Almost immediately, Rainbow took the lead. What's the matter, Storm Chaser? She called up. Can't keep up. Just getting warmed up. Fluttershy called back, trying to say on airing it. Ditsy watched the Pegasi disappear and flew around the wood outside of the woods to wait for the finish line. Fluttershy weaved through the trees, moving as fast as the wings could carry her. But Rainbow was pulling further and further ahead. Rainbow, Fluttershy scanned the ground, desperately searching for shortcut markers. Just as Rainbow moved out of sight completely, Fluttershy spotted the first blue mushroom. She turned left sharply, passing through a narrow tunnel be beneath the bow, bow, bows, bows. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> she she emerged just a moment after Rainbow spotted the spot where the shortcut ended. The kaleidoscope, peg the kaleidoscope Pegasus glanced backward in surprise. Wow, you're faster than I thought. Time to step it up. Rainbow beat her wings even harder. Fluttershy watched in amazement as the Pegasus continued to rocket ahead. She's even faster than I expected, Fluttershy thought. Do you know it'd be funny if like uh Fluttershy had like this weird like extra male voice inside her head? <laughs> like 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 so I can imagine just like a black man voice like uh Who's the guy from Wanted the Black Dude? He makes like he did he narrated like March of the Penguins. 
<laughs> Thank you, just the She's even faster than I thought. What if I thought? I hope there's enough shortcuts for me to keep up. Like, I don't know, something about that is just funny. She turned, she took a turn at the next blue mushroom and found herself floating over a wide gorge that Rainbow had was likely going all the way around. After a moment, she reached the other side and passing through a wall of brush was back on the red trail. A few more shortcuts soon after kept her close behind Rainbow once again. The two ponies turned a corner and came to the straightaway. The light beyond the woods was visible, a speck a, hun a few hundred meters away. Fluttershy had a tiny lead, but Rainbow was closing in fast. Fluttershy slowed, deliberately letting her rival get ahead. Quickly, the yellow pegasus grabbed the branch Ditsy had mentioned, pushed it back, and jumped on the branch sat her, sat against her flank, and let go of the tree. Whoosh! <laughs> the branch snapped back into its original position, hurling Fluttershy forward at the speed she had never experienced before. The Pegasus spread her wings and rode the air easily thanks to the incredible momentum. Rainbow Dash was stunned when the other Pegasus blazed past her, plummeting, plummeting through the finish line. I'm going to win, Flutish, I thought ecstatically. I'm actually going to snag. A loose branch caught on Flutish, which, given her uncontrollable speed, sent her hurling into a chaotic tumble. Her pitch, She pitched forward with a shriek and plowed into the ground and across the finish line. <laughs> It took Fluttershy a moment to get her bearings, but when she had, she realized she had beaten Rainbow. The other racer had come to stop at the finish line a few moments later, and her expression incredulous. Ha, huh, take that! Fluttershy announced proudly. Rainbow Dash said nothing. She just stared at Fluttershy with a shocked and confused expression. Fluttershy began to sense that something was wrong. It took Rainbow a moment to speak. She was unable to piece the tur turn of the events together. <laughs> Fluttershy. Oh God, Fluttershy. I think my voice is going again. <clears throat> okay, hold on. I'll be right back. I need to. I need to fix my throat really quick. <clears throat> I'm gonna squeeze. Okay, I think I got it. Fluttershy's eyes went wide. How did she know? I didn't let my character down for an instant. It's not like she can see my. Fluttershy stopped and put her hooves to her fully expose her face. The Wonderbolt's mask dangled from the branch that had caught her at the end of the race. But if you're Fluttershy, said Rainbow, in an almost scared tiny tone, then who is? Ditsy made a move to get out of the way, but Rainbow was on her in an instant. The sign Pegasus tore off the mask, revealing Ditsy's telltale. Wait, what did she have? Oh, wait. He'd put on the goggles, okay. Titi's telltale misaligned eyes. Titi do, said Rainbow, shocked once again. All right, what the hay is going on here? Well, uh, every time someone does up, I'm just gonna keep it like, oh. Uh. Dizzy stammered. She wasn't supposed to tell anyone but the client what she was up to. The matchup was destined to fail if she did. I, I, it was my idea. Fluttershy slide smoothie. Did she just agree to help with me? Leave her out of this. But why and how? <laughs> Fluttershy moaned and sank to the ground, covering her face completely with her mane and holding it there. Fluttershy stamped uh, mumble, 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 mumble. Rainbow stamped her hook. Fluttershy, this isn't funny. I want an explanation now. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Fluttershy speak. I just, just really wanted you to think I was cool, Rainbow. But I was supposed to reveal my identity. Identity. Identity later, not like this. But why did you make me think you were cool? <laughs> because it was the only way I could get you to like me, Fluttershy sobbed, collapsing yet again. What, Fluttershy? I already, I already like your, you. Mm, no, sobbed Fluttershy. I mean, like me. Rainbow's eyes widened. Fluttershy, she stared. She started to believe. Do you, uh, you like me? Yes, Fluttershy managed to gurgle between sobs. That's just gross. I hate that word. Gurgle. It just sounds gross. Like, kind of like musty. I don't know. It's like one of those words. Those things just, those, those words just, I don't like that. Well, that saves a lot of trouble then. Fluttershy, she's crying suddenly. Wait, what? What? 
What? Uh, Dash was blushing now, she, but she was smiling. I actually have had a crush on you for a while now. I was just scared to tell you. Foolish, I gaped, gasped, and sat up. You, you did? Yeah, said Rainbow, her usual figure returning. I like the Wonderbolts and all. I think their flying is really cool, but I don't, you know, love them. You don't? Nah, said Rainbow. I find the sweet, timid types much more charming. Oh ho 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 ho! <laughs> Rainbow jumped forward suddenly and scooped Fluttershy in a big hug, lifting her into the air a bit. Fluttershy hugged back, her tears in her eyes now stemming from happiness rather than despair. Rainbow said Fluttershy after they touched down again. Just give me a moment to probably thank Ditty. For all the trouble I put her through, maybe we can hang out. Ho 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 ho! That's so blue leg. Okay. Rainbow Dash smiled. Yeah, go ahead. But I gotta stop saying blue leg. Like that's not even my word. But I just curse you, Flash. Your addictiveness. No, not Dash Bash B A A. S H and not the comic, not the not the anime one. It's a YouTuber I watch. He's he's pretty he's pretty badass. He's he's got like plus ten to awesomeness. How much do I owe you? Bush asked. I owe horse apples. I forgot to set a price before we started. Did he admitted? I'll just send you the money later. Flesh I said five hundred bits. F f f combo breaker. <laughs> f f five hundred bits. Did he stammered? That's so much. Oh, you deserve it, Flourish I cooed. I put you through so much today. The yellow pegasus removed her wonderful outfit and gave it a ditty. Spitfire will probably be wanting this bag, she said sheepish she sheepishly. I'll see you later. I'm going to hang out with Rainbow Dash. Oh ho ho ho. I gotta stop doing that too. Grinning, Flourish I turned away and skipped over to a waiting friend. <clears throat> Hold on, it's always kind of my tradition to do this. I always say the last few sentences quite epically or just how it was supposed to be read. <clears throat> Wait, Rainbow now suddenly. We can hang out, but only on one condition. Flourish I stopped. And that is wash that dye out of your mane. You look like the great and powerful Trixie. Flourish I and Ditsy laughed aloud, and Ditsy waved Goodbye to the pair before taking to the sky once again. That was shipping and handling. Capitulo cinco. And the random comments. I'm just gonna read one. I think I like like reading random comments at the end of the thing. I'm just gonna read one right now. I choose you. Great and powerful Trixie, my left flank. Okay, there it is. That's the only comment I'm reading this time because this thing is extremely long. The thing is over, but if you want to keep hearing me talk with my sensual voice, then stay behind. I've got a lot to learn. No, that is weird. <laughs> well, Pooh, I was hoping for Flutter Mac. I'm just going to talk about my little shipping preferences here. I like Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, because I think the first fic I've ever heard was... Iska. God bless his soul. <laughs> Celestia, bless his soul. He's no longer with us. Um, I don't know. I, I Silent Pony Hill 2 was like my first instance of a real shipping. It was kind of weird because, uh, I don't know. I need to make a random rant video like this. Random Rants by Riccana Saliano or Random Rants by Nicholi if you don't know what that is. Random rants by like just me just saying random rants and I'll have like a big topic at the beginning but you know it'll probably turn into a, like a weird one. I think I might just do one right now. Um, my shipping preferences I like Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash because the Silent Pony Hill too. Because I don't know I had never experienced like I've never seen it in the fix before this because I think the other fix were were unfortunately cupcakes. They don't want to talk about it. Um. My little dashy, yeah, and it was sad, but I, I just didn't, I, I don't think I cried. I mean, I like heard it, and then I, I was like, I finished listening to it, because I don't really read fictions. 
because I don't know. I read way too much already. And my eyes hurt. I mean, I have to, yeah. I'm not. I'm not even going to go into. I have like a bookcase of just weird books, like like Charlie Bone, <sighs> Harry Potter series. I've read that entire thing. I've got some comics. Uh, Blackbird comics. If you don't know what that is, uh, Twilight. I have in there. Mm, Hunger Games. Uh, Charlie Bone. Did I say Charlie Bone? Um, the animal. The entire Animorph series. I have in there. It's kind of weird because I. Uh, my bookie work. By, a comedian. I forget it. I can see it. I just can't read the author. Anyways, um, I really liked Fluttermac because I was like, not like I don't like. I'm gonna say this. Gay people and les lesbians are awesome. Like I, I know them personally. They're awesome. But when it comes to like shipping, I can respect it, and I like some of them. <clears throat> AKA Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash. But I really like Fluttershy and Big Mac because they don't talk. Like it's, it's adorable. Like they're like a timid couple. Like and one's a gentle giant. The other one's the like the, the adorable one. Is all I can really say. And I was like, I was like, grown on, like, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't condone lesbian people or gay people. And I was like, dude, whatever. I mean, if they love each other, then why not? I mean, what's, what's, like, really, what are you going to do? Kill them? Oh, yeah, that already happened, but I don't know how to explain it. Just, let's just leave it at that. I like, I like lesbian and gay people because they're awesome. I know some, and they're pretty cool. And, uh, I'm straight myself, so, you know, can see that happening. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Anyways, uh, I just made this extremely long for no reason. Alright, I'll just have, like, a random rant. The end of these, I don't know why. At the, at the end of every chapter, I'll say when it's over. Just so you guys know, because I don't know why I like having these random rants. Okay, so.